Robin and the rest of the, of the Meta Tech organizers for making me take a 10 hour flight and have a great barbecue last night <laughs> coming from Argentina. Uh, it was actually pretty good, so good job there. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about some figures um, of uh, private equity and venture capital industry in Latin America. But first I wanna give you a, a little sense of what LabCA is, it's gonna be really fast. So, if this works, there it goes. So LabCA is a, is a US based organization who, which has been around since 2007, promoting the industry uh, and trying to collect information and making sure that a lot of fund managers from all around the world look at the region and, uh, and invest in private equity and venture capital. So we currently have about 120 firms that are member firms of LAVCA and we do several uh, events throughout the year. There's, there was the last one was a couple of months ago in New York, some of you were there. And collectively those 120 firms manage about $50 billion. So it's a, it's a pretty big, uh, a big number for the region. We also produce some reports. Uh, in, if you go to our website, there are some of them available there or you can see some summaries. Uh, but I recommend if you're interested in, in knowing more about data of the region, LabCA is a really great source to, to access that. These are some of the, the funds that are member firms that are focused in venture capital. So we also have the bigger private equity funds uh, within the 50 billion that I just mentioned, but some of the names there uh, are actively investing in venture capital in, in Latin America. In 2011, we had our annual survey on fund managers and investors in, in Latin America, so I wanted to share a couple of figures. This is the total private equity venture capital investment amount in 2011. For 2012, we, we don't have the final figures yet, but they're gonna be close to this. Uh, and of those, there were 45 that were tech investments. So we, don't, we can't really split between venture capital and private equity. It's, it's really hard to do that in the region. Uh, but this is kind of a proxy of what we feel is the venture capital industry. And, uh, and collectively, those 45 deals invested 107 million, which me means that the average deal size is less than 3 million. So I wanted to walk you through some of the uh, trends and stories we, we see uh, in the region. First of all, as, as, as I heard yesterday, uh, and I missed several of the panels, but I was here in the afternoon, there are, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a really excitement about uh, the rise of the middle class. These are figures from Brazil, in Mexico, we've, we've started to see many of these, uh, these figures as well. Sorry, I didn't find any, any particular Mexican data, but I think this represents uh, the region as a whole. Uh, over the last five to 10 years, there was a huge amount of money coming into the region. There were many regulate, regulatory changes, and the region is seeing middle class growth significant, you know, in incredible, in incredible numbers. And in fact, uh, if you look at these figures, only in Brazil there are like 50 million people that moved up uh, from, from uh, low class to middle class. And the other interesting thing is that those middle classes are really connected. And, uh, and, and the digital divide that used to, to happen between the, the upper classes and the middle classes is, is really gone. Uh, yesterday in the, in the women's panel, uh, there were some, some numbers that, that weren't really uh, really positive, but I think that this is actually really positive. Of the, class, of the middle class, there's 86% of women uh, that, that participate from the middle class in social networks. So if you think about starting up a business and you're looking at digital uh, businesses, this information is really, really valuable. In terms of, uh, of a region, the other interesting thing is that it used to be that we had a huge gap in technology or access to technology between the emerging markets in Latin America and countries like the US or Europe. Uh, this is gone, it's, it's more than gone in fact. Some people argue that in Latin America we had uh, a leap forward because we s basically skipped the, the PC era and now everyone has a cell phone and you know, most people have cell phone in Latin America even in, in larger numbers or larger per percentages than in, uh, in other most more developed countries. Educational levels, this is also something that was mentioned uh, yesterday. In general, some of the, you know, the most attractive countries in, the, in Latin America have relatively good educational uh, systems. Uh, you know, yesterday, I know I missed that panel, but I know that uh, the Alan, Alan Taylor mentioned that uh, in some, some countries like Argentina, this is a, pre, uh, a pretty good differentiator and it's really good uh, source of talent. And also the favorable demographics, I mean, Globally, half of the population today is less than 25 years old. And in Latin America, this is even 
uh, the, the percentage is even, is even bigger. Uh, and again, these are, these are trends that for someone that is thinking of starting a business in the digital space are really, really positive. And for investors, of course, of course, it's also uh, a very good trend. And the last is, in the next four years, we're gonna see many uh, dollars coming into the region because of these global events that are happening both in Brazil, but it's gonna have an impact throughout the region and it will give us visibility for may many, uh, many international investors. So those are the good news. Uh, some of the bad news, though, uh, that were also mentioned yesterday, the, to me, the biggest one is the lack of exits. Uh, as an industry and as a region, we need to focus over the next five years to start getting exits done and, uh, and to start to get those, those role models that someone mentioned uh, in other panels. Uh, we really need to cut, kind of like work together as an industry to push for those exits to happen. And, and this is critical because not only this will give the returns to the investors, but it also close the cycle and it will create entrepreneurs that have money that can take that money and you know, allocate a portion to that to angel investments and this, you know, this creates more companies and, uh, and it's the way that, that the industry will, will be sustainable in the long run. The second aspect, uh, which is less obvious, is when, when you look at the US, you know, there are many standard templates for doing term sheets for doing shareholders agreements. Everyone has their own book. If you talk to different lawyers, they will have different types of term sheets. But overall, there's, a, there's one major standard and there's one rule of law and, uh, and you can basically talk the same language. When you go to Latin America, you have 20 countries and each country is different and not only is different, but most of them are based on law that is completely different from the US law. So when someone says, well, let's use the templates that they use in Silicon Valley, sometimes it doesn't work, especially when you we're dealing with stock options, for example, some countries are not able to, 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 to create those kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, instruments. So you start getting into situations where, as an investor, you go, you look at the uh, Series A investment, and when you start looking at the documents and how it was created for, um, for, for angel investment uh, purposes, it's really messy. And every country is different, so for an international investor to come into Latin America, sometimes it's challenging, and they don't really understand the subtleties. Uh, and this sometimes prevents uh, investments. The third, this is uh, something I discussed yesterday night with, uh, with some entrepreneurs. Uh, in general, this of course varies country by country, but in general, when you're looking at the accelerators that are coming up, or even the angel investor networks, etc., typically, if you have a decent idea, getting the first 25 to 50K is possible. Uh, it's also possible that if you proved that you have a business and it's, tr it's tractioning and you need you know, funding to expand and to scale it up, it's also possible to find venture capital firms, both local, regional, and even from Silicon Valley that are willing to pay, to, to, to invest more than a million bucks in a company that is, uh, that is looking really, really promising. What is really hard is that, is the gap. Uh, yesterday someone asked about, I think uh, one of the questions was, where do you see the gap? We see the gap in that range of 100 to 500K. Again, someone uh, yesterday mentioned that here in Mexico, probably the figures are a little higher, that it's you know, 250 to 750, probably because of the size of the, of the economy. But in general, I see that there's a, there's a big gap there that is not covered by the accelerators, it's not covered by the angel investors, and it's not covered by m many of the venture capital firms. Uh, which don't feel very comfortable investing in that, in that price range. And lastly, uh, the rule of law. You know, in general, um, you know, Latin, Latins tend to think about law as things that are there to you know, prevent you from doing things, uh, but we have our way, right? And, uh, and this, for a long-term investor as a venture capitalist, sometimes is, uh, is a big challenge. So where are the opportunities? Uh, when you think about industries, I think that we all agree that the main industries that serve the middle class are the ones that are more appealing. So you're thinking of healthcare, you're thinking about financial services, uh, you're thinking about retail, you're thinking about you know, even distribution, logistics, those kind of things, which are normally where the opportunities are everywhere, right? But when, what I wanted to give you today is some insight about where, where I think some of the opportunities are and how to approach them. Uh, Many things are taken from granted, for, for granted in the US and in Europe. 
that in Latin America don't exist or are really, really lacking. And I think that that's exactly where the opportunity is. For example, you know, when you ship a product in FedEx, you assume and you know that it will get there. That's not true in many countries in Latin America. And when you apply this idea to industries like financial services, like uh, you know, distribution, like retail, that's in the, the combination of the industry and this type of, uh, of uh, opportunities is where I think uh, the most interesting companies will, 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 will come up. Another one is choice. You go to a supermarket in the US, you know, there are 30 different ways of buying milk. Uh, when you go to Latin America, that's not true. Many, many industries have monopolies or sell monopolies. And, uh, and when you ask, you know, what are my options for almost anything, there are two, three, four. I think there's opportunity to build around that and create more, more choices for the consumer. And last is the customer experience. Uh, I've been going crazy thinking about how many things that I do every day I hate. You know, I, and this is, you know, this is something that happens everywhere. And I don't know how many of you are happy with your experience going to the bank or you know, dealing with your healthcare insurance company. You know, there are many, many, many companies or many industries that are you know, ripe for, for total disruption. But in Latin America, it's even worse because the, the Latin Americans are used to being treated badly. So even if you come up with an idea that is slightly better, if it's, you know, if you focus only on the experience, the user experience, and make my experience of buying something better than, you know, when I go to a supermarket in Argentina, I have to budget about an hour just to stay in line. And I don't go to a supermarket, you know, I just don't go. Uh, so that, that, th these are the areas where, uh, where I think uh, many of the next big, big companies in Latin America are going to come. Uh, and, uh, well, I think that was it. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy to ask, to answer any questions, uh, and uh, now or, or later. But uh, thank you, thanks again for the invitation, and hope uh, hope to talk to many of you later. <laughs>